The assembly will hear an address by His Excellency Pedro Castillo Terrones, President of the Republic of Peru. May I request protocol to escort His Excellency. On behalf of the General Assembly, I have the honor to welcome to the United Nations His Excellency Pedro Castillo Terrones, President of the Republic of Peru, and to invite him to address the Assembly. Señor Presidente. Mr. President of the General Assembly, Mr. Secretary General, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the 76th session of the General Assembly is taking place in a world context marked by instability and uncertainty. Given this, we can be certain that our peoples are demanding answers on the future of the pandemic, peace, security, economic recovery, and the decrease of inequality and poverty. It is up to you, Mr. President, to shoulder the responsibility of leading the General Assembly at this changing and fragile moment. I am convinced that your dexterity, knowledge, and experience will lead us to the best decisions and success in our endeavors. Coinciding with the bicentennial of Peru's independence on the 28th of July of this year, I assumed the presidency of the Republic in a democratic exercise whereby the sovereign will of the people led to a vote for social change with macroeconomic stability and sustainable growth. It is the first time in the history of my country that a school teacher from the rural world has assumed the leadership and destination of my country. I am compelled by my responsibility towards the poor, the disenfranchised, the most vulnerable people, businesses, middle classes, and all those who have suffered from the pandemic without exclusion, all Peruvians. The Peru, Peru is a cradle of one of the greatest civilizations in the history of humanity. It is a multicultural country, which is multi-ethnic, and it has staked my government to build a society and a state with roots in the people, with social inclusion that would eliminate inequality, unfair distribution of wealth, and which would build a sound and solid democratic society. A society whereby freedom and civil rights would be guaranteed by a democratic and representative government and state that would drive forward the participation of the people and governments at the subnational level, regional and local levels in all processes in taking decisions that impact the destiny and lives of our people. I reaffirm the vocation and affiliation which is democratic of my government. I reaffirm its commitment to social justice. The task is not just to consolidate the rule of law and the division of powers, but also to make effective in political life the exercise of the rights of the people on a day-to-day -day basis. 25 years ago, and since the last 25 years, the economy of Peru has enjoyed sustained growth, one of the most important economies in Latin America. And notwithstanding this, the ravages of the pandemic on the national economy and the world will impact our responsible management and efficient macroeconomic framework in order to continue expanding and growing and provide better redistribution of income. At the same time, Peru presents indicators of inequality and extreme exclusion, a situation which compromises the values and ethics of a democratic society, impacts the competitiveness of the state and the economy, and that is why it's necessary to provide social transformation that will allow all Peruvian men and women to enjoy their social and economic rights, in addition to fundamental freedoms, civil rights, and political rights. A transformation of all households and every family, their rights and education, health care, decent employment, dignified salaries, social security, 
access to housing and access to individual life, economics, and a collective, which is respectful of the rights of Mother Earth. We also endorse the historic initiative of Secretary General Antonio Guterres to build a common agenda in the world, in a post-pandemic world, that would establish a new social contract. You have reminded us, Mr. Secretary General, that the 10 richest men in the world combined wealth increased by a half billion dollars since the beginning of the pandemic, while we are grappling with the worst employment crisis since the Great Depression, with millions of people out of work or underemployed. Given the unequal distribution of wealth, the Secretary General is asking the world to have a new social contract worldwide, which we fully endorse. The same diagnosis and determination of a new social contract is important for transformative action. When we look at the risks of COVID, which took the lives of more than four and a half million people in the world, and the number of infected with COVID exceeded 220 million in the second consecutive year of this pandemic. And this is the context against which this general debate is taking place. Vaccines have opened the way and faith for humanity to assume the conviction that we will win this battle. But combating the pandemic has shown and demonstrated the international system incapacity to cooperate under principles of solidarity and efficiency. We need agreements in place that will ensure equitable access to vaccines and their application. Multilateral cooperation is still very much absent in fighting COVID-19. The initiative of a new global agenda should include vigorous and urgent multilateral action to combat the pandemic and allow access for all countries, especially the poorest, to vaccines and health coverage. Peru will be an active and dynamic member in the common effort of all countries gaining access, which is inclusive, equitable, and non-discriminatory to all diagnoses, thera therapies, medications, and vaccines, as well as to technology and healthcare products, including their components and precursors as required in responding to COVID-19 as a worldwide priority, including access, which is fair. We must attach greatest priority to strengthening international scientific cooperation to combat the pandemic. We must strengthen initiatives that have been developed with this view in mind, especially given that I want to state on behalf of Peru the signing of a world agreement between heads of state and the owners of patents to guarantee universal access to the vaccine of all inhabitants of the planet without any privileges or discrimination. This would be a serious demonstration of our commitment to life and health for all peoples. Mr. President, it is necessary to adapt the sustainable development goals to the new reality of the post-pandemic world. Peru has a foreign national policy, which is decentralized, autonomous, which is geared to solidarity and cooperation with all entities, state entities and non-state. Social diplomacy is thus a priority for us, as it is today for the United Nations. And thus we pay special attention to the sustainable development goals, which are most pressing for the most needy, for the poorest. The goal of zero hunger should focus the efforts of the international community. It is vital to redouble our action to meet the food needs, the immediate food needs of all vulnerable people. It's vital to stimulate social protection programs, to maintain and increase world trade in food, to maintain the proper functioning of the gears of the national supply chains for food and to support small producers' capacity to increase the production of food. We are also committed to a social development policy which will allow Peru to meet the Millennium Development Goals, especially with regard to access to water, 
healthcare networks, reducing poverty, eliminating extreme poverty, reducing infant mortality, full access to health care, guaranteeing inclusive and quality education, obtaining gender equality, especially job creation and improving informal employment. Jobs are the only lasting antidote to poverty. Health care, education, access to water and sanitation cannot be a business which is a profitable one. These are fundamental human rights that we need to guarantee, ensuring universal access, which is of quality without any discrimination. As a school teacher by profession, I must call the international attention to the million of boys and girls and adolescents around the world who are not in school, who are not being education, a situation which has been worsened by the health care crisis. I am convinced that society's capacity to overcome the complex challenges we must grapple with must include education for our children, our young people. The Secretary General's initiative to agree on a new global social contract should be reflected thus, given the serious impact of the pandemic on schools and education, it should be reflected thus in an initiative to universalize education. Women and girls account for half of the world's population. They are a strong, determining force with creative capacity, labor potential, economic and spiritual potential, which must be unlocked for our societies. The new global social pact must be a leap forward in the effective exercise of rights for women. These are human rights, and they should go beyond recognition. They should be effectively enjoyed at all levels, local, regional, national, and worldwide. We must establish specific and concrete gender equity. We must eliminate all legal, social, and economic obstacles that hinder the empowerment of women and girls. We must fully guarantee their rights and eliminate all pro social practices and norms which are discriminatory against women. My government will do so. Peru, Mr. President, is thereby linking its national agenda for social development with the priority agenda of the United Nations with the common goal of applying and achieving Agenda 2030. It is time to put forward the social component in international relations and to commit ourselves to all actions, initiatives, and resources of the United Nations being used for the fulfillment of the Sustainable Development Goals. Social diplomacy is not just a national requirement, it is a global imperative. Mr. President, human action without respect for nature has led us to question the viability of the planet. Fighting climate change calls into question our consciences, limiting increases of the temperature between 1.5 and 2 degrees, which is a goal that was set forth in the Paris Agreement, is a commitment in its very viability. Meanwhile, desertification continues to clear forests, especially in the Amazon, and the effects of climate change are increasingly devastating. The time has come to rethink our activities to achieve social sustainable development in harmony with the planet with a view to bequeathing a habitable world for future generations. Those countries that most pollute should imperatively meet their obligations. Peru has taken on the goal of becoming a country uh, which is carbon neutral by 2050 and reducing greenhouse gases from 30 to 40 percent, thereby respecting what was projected for 2030. As an expression of its commitment to the health of the planet, my government will declare the national climate emergency. This assembly once more will be debating the very serious problem of terrorism. Peru has suffered from violent terrorism and has been able to prevail. We are aware of, reject, and condemn terrorism in all of its forms, and we support any action to fight it. We are committed to the global strategy of the United Nations against terror terrorism. Terrorism can never be a means for social transformation. 
violence only leads to destruction, violations of human rights and victims who are the poorest and the most dispossessed. Terrorism is violence against human dignity and it is not reconcilable with the values of democratic societies. At the regional level, Peru is committed to international peace and security. It is committed to the respect of international law and an inclusive agenda. Mr. President, I am a teacher who is convinced that if we do not use the governments of all the world to help children move forward, we will not have accomplished anything. The present is fragile for world diplomacy, particularly for multilateralism. But I believe that our collective determination will always be stronger, and I stand convinced that with the initiative of a new global agenda, we can build together a world of peace, a world of friendship, of cooperation and well-being for one and all. As a teacher, as a government, I must say this to you, let's invest in education, in an educated people, we'll never be fooled. Thank you. On behalf of the General Assembly, I wish to thank the President of the Republic of Peru for the statement just made, and I request protocol to escort His Excellency. I now give the floor.